locked in the game. Savour it, enjoy it. A legend returns. Here come the five red lights for the French Grand Prix. Keep an eye on Hackenden. It's right out, and away we go, go, go. And it looks like everyone has got away safely. How is the start? Charles Leclerc is round the outside of George Russell. It looks like Charles got a better second base of a start. I think I saw he's going to go round the outside. But the turn one, it's a vital race for Leclerc. Just to the championship. Where is Hackenden? Hackenden is fifth. Hacking in his fifth, he's got a great start! As Daniel Norris went around the outside of Eddie Jackson lost his front wing in the process! So here's the start then from Mick Hacken, who's already making highlights of his first uh, start. And uh, we've barely got off the line, about 100 meters, and Hacken is already making waves in this race. Let's see what happened to Norris. He got out on the blue strip, and that was inevitable. Team Radio, Jackson has lost fifth gear. Mick uh, is doing ever so well. At the end of at the beginning of that 10, Mick Hacken is still on for a good points haul in this race. Hacken comes in. With a slow stop and there's problem on the front right for Mick Hacken. And then there was definitely a problem there on the front right. Hacken with a bit of a slow stop. He's going to come out behind Lewis Hamilton. Mick is going onto the stop. Now let's hopefully watch him fly. It's a much better pit stop this time. No problems. Well, closer to Alonso there. Ah! So here comes Mick Hackenden. This is prime position now. Jackson comes in. And they just about had tyres ready. But there's a problem on the right rear for Jackson as well. This race is now livened up now. Charles Leclerc is 23 seconds clear of Russell, but still has to pit the dry tyres himself. There goes Mick Hackenden down the inside of Granada with the Alpine. In, uh, I can't remember the corner's name. He falls Alonso off the track. And Mick Hackenden, a stunning move for P6. Can he get P5? Can Hackenden pass Lewis Hamilton? This could be a legendary battle here, folks. Round the outside. Mick Hackenden, no regard for Hamilton's reputation. Round the outside. Oh, what a stunning move. And he made it stick. Mick Hackenden is on fire. And now Charles round the outside of uh, George Russell with DRS. And uh, he's back in the lead. But round the final corner comes Charles Leclerc to win the French Grand Prix. It's a home away from home for Charles Leclerc. He wins the French Grand Prix and carves a chunk into the lead of Max Verstappen. And here comes Mika Hakkinen to score points on his reality re debut in return. What a race by Hakkinen. The Hungarian Grand Prix has had its fair share of memorable moments. Jerry Butzen holding off Ayrton Senna to win in 1990. Nigel Mansell's crowning of the 1992 championship. Damon Hill almost scoring a memorable win in an underpowered arrows in 1997. A year later, Michael Schumacher and Ferrari scoring arguably the greatest ever strategic race win. 
James Allen's infamous commentary for Jensen Button's first victory in 2006. Heki Kovalainen scored his one and only victory here in 2008. And of course, most recently, last season, when Esteban Ocon scored his first victory. Today, we witness even more history being made as we have a record attendance this weekend, all thanks to one man, the returning Mika Hakkinen. Word in the panic is that Mick will be announced at Audi's second driver during the summer break, which begins after this race is over. And some teams are in for a busy time, as Aaron explains. Firstly, at Audi, we already know that they'll be announcing their brand partnership with Connorsport, which is due to start for the 2023 season. But now huge rumour has it that they'll also be announcing their 2023 Challenger and their in-house power units. We should also know the majority of the 2023 driver lineups as well, in particular the situations with Oscar Piastri, Daniel Ricciardo, Pierre Gasly and Aidan Jackson. For Piastri, he's involved in a court case dispute between Alpine and McLaren over his contract. Should McLaren win this case, which seems the most likely, the chances are that Ricciardo will have to make way. And Daniel's options are limited at this current time, with only Alfred Turi and maybe Haas being the only realistic ones. Whatever happens with Piastri, a return to Alpine is off the table, as their plan B, if they need it, could be either Pierre Gasly or an outside shot for Mick Schumacher, which is why those teams are Ricardo's options. Vader Jackson, he's of course on load at Audi from Mercedes as part of the power unit deal both teams struck at the beginning of the year. If this is true about Audi's power unit reveal, Will they lose Aiden as a result? Most likely not. Worst case scenario is that they will probably have to compensate Mercedes further than they are already in their terms of their load. With Hamilton and Russell already penned in for 2023 and Jackson's career trajectory soaring high this season with two race wins, Mercedes will most likely want to keep him in the car to keep gaining that vital experience. As we return to the race weekend, we'll stick with Mercedes. They locked out the front row yesterday with Hamilton securing pole 105, while Jackson had his worst qualifying session of the season down in 17. But of course he is running a worn down power unit, and Hungary has always been a bogey track for him, so all Audi's hopes today rest on Hakkinen, and it's so far so good for him this weekend as he starts 7th. Championship leader Max Verstappen starts 3rd, with Charles 5th, and signs an eighth. Thank you, Aaron. Well, it's tight, it's twisty, it's called Monaco without the barriers by some. That describes the Hungara ring in a nutshell, as demonstrated for this onboard lap by championship leader Max Verstappen. So a lap of the Hungar ring on board world champion and world championship leader Max Verstappen in the Red Bull. Going into turn one on a track that has been on the calendar since 1986. And even though overtaking might be difficult, it has riders with classics. Virtually unchanged save for the addition of the two DRS zones uh, on this circuit. Max has just gone out of turn four now. Turn five, we've seen moves down this straight before in Jackson on Julio Alesi. In F2 in 2020 comes to mind. It's a nice sweeping corner in these fast, uh, faster cars than in the past. And now we enter the really twisty section. And this is why this uh, circuit is notorious for its lack of overtaking opportunities and known as Monaco without the barriers. Uh, this tight twisty section here. But when the car is hooked up, you can really feel uh, the grip and the mechanical grip of these cars really does make this go by in a blur. Uh, but it still makes everything difficult, especially with the wider vehicles. We're coming to the end, lap, uh, end of the lap now with Verstappen. Verstappen going for P3 in qualifying uh, behind two Mercedes, one of which Lewis Hamilton, who is a bit of a master here. I think he has like eight wins, which is the most in almost any circuit aside from Michael Schumacher in France. Of course, Lewis beat that on another track himself. That is a lap of the Hungarian Grand Prix.
Here we are then on the verge of a well-earned summer break for the 11 teams of the 2022 Formula 1 season. But before we do any of that and any relaxing, it's time for one last bit of business in this half of the season. It's here today for the Hungarian Grand Prix. The Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton and George Russell lock out the front row on a track which Hamilton has been quite the specialist. So with overtaking difficult, will this finally be the weekend they break their barren streak? One way to find out, let's cross over to Aaron Hamilton of the Cup of Dreambox for the 13th round in 2022, the Hungarian Grand Prix. Thank you, Chaos. Good afternoon, everybody. 14 corners, 2.7 miles, two DRS zones, and a track that is notorious for its lack of overtaking opportunities. So, does that mean, as Chaos said, Mercedes break their barren streak? Will Lewis Hamilton score one win 104? Or will George Russell score win one or two technically because he did win the sprint race in Austria earlier this season. We know Max Verstappen can cut through the field even here. So maybe he in his car advantage over the Mercedes in front of him will race away as expected. But at the Hungara ring it has always provided some magnificent results. Just last year we had Esteban Ocon winning the most unlikely race after absolute chaos at the first start in which Bottas took down two Red Bull cars by himself in a game of Skittles, as Charles Leclerc called it. Anything can really happen now. Can Mercedes finally do it and win their first race of 22? Let's find out. Let's start with the grid first. Yuki Sedona and Alex Albin will take penalties and start from the back of the grid. And they're going to be followed by Lance Stroll and Nicholas Stevie. Aidan Jackson is 17th ahead of Sebastian Vettel in his worst qualifying of the season and they're behind the Haas boys of Mick Schumacher and Kevin Magnussen. The pairs continue with Joe Guan Yu and Valtteri Bottas and then Pierre Gasly and Fernando Alonso. As we go into the top 10, Daniel Ricciardo is there alongside Esteban Ocon, last year's winner on row 5. It's Carl Sainz and Mika Hakkinen starting 8th and 7th. Perez is with Charles Leclerc. Lando Norris continues his stellar qualifying run by going for fourth behind Max Verstappen. The Mercedes have logged out the third row for I believe the third time this season. Can they finally convert one of these into a win? And for which one if that turns out to be the case? Everyone starting on the medium tyres apart from Lance Stroll who's taking a gamble on the softs. Well, this is a very mixed up grid. We've got Lando Norris, an outlier in P4, Carl Sainz in P8, and Aiden Jackson all the way down in P17 with warm power units in, uh, components in his Audi. And this has been a bit of a bogey track for Jackson in the past. Uh, he struggled, I believe, in the feature race in 2020. And of course, in the uncompetitive Haas last season, he got barely anywhere either. In fact, he actually suffered ERS component problems uh, during that race, uh, but he was a long way behind in the uncompetitive pass anyway, so it really didn't count for much. Uh, but today, Aiden Jackson has a new setback at a bogey track. It's all kind of coming to him at this circuit, so I'll be hoping that he uses up a season's worth of bad luck in this race. You know, it's not the best track for him, and he's got warm components, and uh, well, <laughs> he's down in B17 uh, after his worst qualifying of the season. But Audi, all their hopes still rest on Mika Hakkinen. And we are expecting Mika to be confirmed as Audi's second driver for the rest of the season during the summer break, in which we will also know the details, uh, the more fuller details of their Connorsville partnership set to start next year. And as we said earlier, maybe the big rumor is that Audi could be bringing in their power units after all. After initially being put in 2026, uh, when they were supposed to come in, uh, their power unit component progression has come forward, so we'll be looking forward to that. And uh, well, that could really put Audi right in the thick of it next season. And considering how in the thick of it they've been this year, they won't have to go very far. They just need to probably be more competitive in terms of the leaders. Uh, but they've already competed with Red Bulls and Ferraris this year. And uh, just not at the very front on a consistent basis, although Jackson, to be fair, has had two wins to his name and Mika Hakkinen got his first points on the board in France as we line up on the grid for the Hungarian Grand Prix. Always expect the unexpected here. Fairy tale results, strategic masterclasses, in particular by Michael Schumacher and that legendary Ferrari team back in 1998. 
Damon Hill almost won in an arrow. Will Mercedes break their barren streak today? Five red lines. Green flag at the back for the Hungarian Grand Prix. It's lights out. And away we go, go, go. How is the start? Looks like George Russell got away better. But Hamilton cuts immediately across his teammate and covers the inside line. Will he sweep back to the racing line? Yes, he will. And will George Russell be under pressure from Verstappen? There is Aiden Jackson flying down the inside of four cars already. And Jackson making good off the start in P13. And it is as you were. Lewis Hamilton still leads from Russell. Mika Hakkinen has passed Sergio Perez, I think. And that's quite the achievement. Or did Perez be Hakkinen off the line? He probably did. Uh, but Hakkinen has got that up to P6. So Hakkinen has moved up a place. And he's been a bit of a specialist round here as well. He's got the largest following. Uh, as it is technically a home away from home for Mika Hakkinen. Every time he came here, there was thousands of fans in the stands for him and they have a reason to cheer Hakkinen's already made up a place on lap one it's Hamilton from Russell for Stafford Norris Leclerc Hakkinen Perez Ricardo Ocon and Carlos Sainz has dropped to 10th so not a good start for Carlos Sainz he's actually almost outside the points here Gasly Aiden Jackson Mick Schumacher Aiden Jackson up to 12th already on a track where he's not been very good at uh, not had the best of luck he's up to P12 it obviously is lap one we're expecting another Aiden Jackson masterclass then. Uh, Mick Schumacher ahead of Fernando Alonso of all people in P14. He's dropped a lot of places. Valtteri Bartas is with uh, Zhou Guan Yu. Sebastian Vettel, Kevin Madison, Yuki Tsunoda for two Williams and Lance Stroll at the back. That is your uh, race at 22 drivers at the end of lap one. Lewis Hamilton, the perfect start. Probably cheekily cut across Russell with an a la Schumacher move, but this is the start from Hacker Perez getting really out of shape off the start box. And that's what gave Hacker the opportunity. He could have made another place had he not been boxed in by Charles Leclerc uh, going around the outside there of Lando Norris. And it was side by side uh, for those two for a while, but Norris did get ahead eventually. Then McLaren comes alive in the hands of Lando Norris in recent races, and it was as you were at the front. Both Mercedes and Max Verstappen. No changes there. Hakkinen seemed to be a little on the tentative on the brakes there, but he did stay ahead of Perez. So here's the start from Aiden Jackson then. An absolutely phenomenal start up to P12 at the end of lap one. Let's see how he did it. Dive bomb uh, down the inside, no doubt. There you go. And uh, vintage Aiden Jackson. Uh, and that puts him up to, I think, P13 at the time, chasing uh, Fernando Alonso there, who had a bad start. And then he passed Alonso down the inside of turn two. Jackson already making waves at the start of this race. And we have to hope that he doesn't run into any more problems. And he could probably get a point from there now, if it's possible. And here's the start from Hamilton. Immediately cutting across a la Michael Schumacher uh, across the start. And uh, then taking back the racing line. I'm not sure if you're allowed to do that, quite frankly. Uh, race control haven't noted it or anything. So I guess he's going to get away with it because it is the start. Well, DRS is enabled, and uh, well, Lewis Hamilton has won here. I think it's a record eight times. Uh, he's been quite the specialist, as Chaos said earlier. And uh, now he is leading comfortably, almost by a second, at George Russell. So Hamilton is getting the pedal down. But will Mercedes play a tactical game here, do you think? Because they want George Russell to stay in second. With overtaking notoriously difficult, Russell is going to need the DRS to keep, uh, keep ahead of Verstappen. So maybe Hamilton will just hang back a bit and try to keep Russell uh, in his DRS and kind of pull him along. That's what Mercedes need to do if they're going to win a race this year, I, I guess. Uh, because when they've been challenged and they've not done the front one, they've been challenged by the likes of Verstappen. They've come off second best, unfortunately. So this could be Mercedes' best chance to grab a Grand Prix win in 2022. They've already won a race this year in the sprint, uh, thanks to George Russell. Uh, so now, is it going to be a game of tactics uh, by Mercedes? Are they going to use Hamilton to tow Russell along uh, for the rest of this race? That would be quite a masterclass stroke there if they can do that and they can pull it off. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. Mick Hakkinen doing an absolutely stunning job in P6 uh, after passing Perez at the start. And the Audi has definitely been the dark horse of the year so far. And Aiden Jackson even proved that at the start. Uh, up in P12, but he's already kind of losing touch with Pierre Gasly a little bit, although DRS is going to help him get right back up to the rear wing of the Alfa Turi. Uh, but don't forget, Jackson is running a more warm power unit that he used in the start of the opening races of the season, uh, simply, as Audi put it, to save 
components to avoid penalties later in the year because they are in a kind of battle for third they are a bit behind the, the saves at the moment but uh now we make a hacking and getting on the board uh they could have been a lot closer had nico holgerberg not really had tremendous bad luck uh but he had that barren streak of like eight races before he scored but then you could say Mika Hagen came in and scored points immediately and he's actually keeping with Charles Leclerc. Um, so that is really good for Audi. This is actually looking rosy for Audi at the moment, but the bad news is the Mercedes are one two. That's gonna be a big haul of points if the race finishes that way and Audi could lose Chuck even more. Their battle, realistically though, is with McLaren and Alpine for that fourth place spot. Uh, and they are very much in command of that position at this very moment. Mika Hakkinen is absolutely doing a fantastic job yet again in that car. P6 and uh, keeping with the leaders, if not changing them. And uh, Ain Jackson now. And Ain Jackson slowing down the straight. He's put it to the side. Is Ain Jackson retiring from this race? And sounds like the gearbox again. Oh, that's a real gearbox from Raiden here. He might be out of this race. That sounds really bad. It's not even changing gear. Whoa, guys, massive problems with the gearbox here. I think the gear changing is delayed. That was amazing. We see it. We're working on the fix up here. Keep going, we can. Keep going. Guys, we're losing our massively right now. Why have we still got this thing anyway? It's still pretty much dead. Just to make sure we get as much mileage out of these components as we can to avoid great penalties like the season, they will come back to us, mate. Keep going if you can. <sighs> I really don't see the point in this right now. I'm so slow. This piece of. <sighs> Alright. And Jackson's frustration is boiling over, and you can see why. Jackson is running at the back with gearbox problems it's a gear change delay uh it seems to wait like two or three seconds and then change gear that is more of a fundamental issue i'm not sure if audi can fix that and i'm not really sure if there's much point running this car anymore uh unless they're hoping for a safety car later on but aiden just seems very slow and pretty much stuck uh yeah, that sounds really bad. I'm not. Su I'm surprised Audi aren't pulling him in. That's uh, that's a very fundamental issue. I'm I'm pretty sure that uh, Jackson will get the black and orange flag. Uh, he's not getting one at the moment uh, by our timing screens. I guess Audi are on the uh, the blower to race control. Obviously, we can't hear those anymore after the 2021 stuff that happened. Uh, with that, but uh, they can still talk to race control. Uh, we just can't hear it. Uh, I'm assuming they're on the board to race control. Uh, probably saying that you know it's a fundamental issue on our end. Uh, we'll fix it. But Aiden is really just a sitting duck at the moment with almost no gear sync at all. He's, he's running in that corner in gear six. That's that's a real problem Aiden's got there. And uh, I really don't understand why Aiden are, or Audi rather are running this at the moment. It's just really getting in the way. And uh, there we go. I think it might be fixed. Okay, and the problem should be resolved now. Please confirm it is for us. Copy. It's all good now. What do you suggest we do? The best case scenario, we hope for a safety car. Worst case scenario, we get lapped. The car should make it to the end of the race. The problem might even reoccur later on. But it's vital we get as much mileage out of these components as possible. We will make it back later in the season. It will be vital in terms of avoiding grip penalties, mate. We know it's tough. Just get as far as you can, buddy. That's the only thing we can do now. <sighs> Can't be all. My apologies for earlier. How's Mika doing? Copy that, mate. We'll figure it out together. Mika is in P6, running in touch with the leaders. He's doing a great job. My fingers are crossed for him. Copy. And on we go then. So Aiden Jackson not retiring from this race. Audi are looking to get as much mileage out of these worn components as possible. So it makes up for it later in the season. It's an interesting strategy really. I wonder if that says to me that Audi, after their updates in Spa, uh, they're going to bring some updates for this, uh, the Belgian Grand Prix. Oh, there's the Spanish Grand Prix there, but the Belgian Grand Prix. Uh, they're going to bring another pack of updates through. 
I wonder if that's going to be the last upgrades of the season then that Audi will bring. They are literally hoping uh, to pretty much get to the end of the season uh, on warm power units that it will be vital later in the year. I wonder if that means that Audi won't be bringing any more real up big upgrades to the car. Of course, they don't really have a cost cap at the moment because they are a new team, so the cost cap always features in last year's uh, compar competitive season and Audi weren't a part of that. So they don't have an unlimited cost cap budget. They have a cost cap budget they must adhere to this season, uh, but their cost cap is bigger because they were lower down the field in the previous year. That's how it works. The cost cap, the lower down the field you are, the more cap you have to spend on upgrades. It was a kind of, uh, a kind of an idea uh, to bring lower end teams uh, up the field. And it certainly works. Um, it has certainly worked out to the most degree, especially here. It's very close between everybody. There is still a bit of a gap between, say, Hamilton and, say, Mick Schumacher of about maybe three seconds. Um, but the pack is very close together this year, and it's been very competitive with all teams scoring in 2022. Yes, we had that crazy British Grand Prix uh, where... You know, the likes of Lance Stroll and Kevin Magnussen got positions, but still, it seems to have worked. And as we said, uh, the lowest team gets the bigger cap, so that gives the biggest cap to Audi. And they've certainly made good use of it, and I guess their upgrades as far could be the last of the season. We have a move here, we have Lando Norris going round the inside there of Charles Leclerc. I'm sure he's already ahead of Charles Leclerc, so it's Charles Leclerc trying to move on Norris. Down the inside, there's Mick Hackenden learning on the outside and just pacing himself and biding his time. Mick Hackenden is right in the thick of it, right at the start of his return uh, with Audi. And now this, look at this pack. We've got fourth and seventh and possibly Carlos Sainz separated by less than a tablecloth, more or less. Uh, Carlos Sainz has actually done really well to get back into P8. He was P10 at the end of lap one. And uh, look at this. Oh my word. As Murray Walker used to say in the game F197, I believe it was, you can see visually just how small the gap is. We have literally four or five cars separated by less than a second. DRS is going to be crucial in this little battle here. Mika Hakkinen absolutely chomping in the bit to get past the McLaren of Lando Norris for P5. That would better his result in France where he finished sixth. Here Gasly has passed Esteban Ocon uh, while we were looking at that. And uh, that's a great move by Gasly. He did that like earlier in the circuit. I always passed Alonso actually. Ocon is falling down I think. And now Hakkinen down the inside of Lando Norris with his old team McLaren. No love for his old team there. He's got a job to do and he did it. Mika Hakkinen is P5 for Audi and absolutely on it. Well, if they're going to get some points this weekend with Jackson ailing down in last and with gearbox problems, then Hackenden is their hope. Oh, my word. What, what was that about? We had some of the uh, uh, guys with their arms out of Arturi. I wonder what that was about. Esteban Ocon has uh, come into the pits. I'm assuming that's for a front wing change. He must have had some damage, which is probably why he fell uh, behind Gasly and Alonso. So that was probably what that was about. And look who's behind him. Ain Jackson. So he's going to see someone today. Is he going to pass him though? That'll be a different matter. It seems to be running normally for Ain Jackson. Uh, at the moment, Mick Schumacher once again just on the verge of points. But not able to get any points on the board. He and I think it's Yuki Tsunoda haven't scored. Oh, Nicholas the TV rather. Hasn't scored this season. They're the only two that haven't. Jackson already struggling uh, with that car and like we said uh, oh my goodness he's running wide he's already struggling just with the handling of the car today the Audi is not playing ball with him uh, on this track it's just a track he just does not like he is not very uh, good round here it's one of his bogey tracks so to speak but uh, Lando Norris is actually losing out to Mika Hakkinen uh, Hakkinen is actually racing away from a McLaren uh, Mika Hagen and McLaren, such a successful partnership in the late 90s and to a degree the early 2000s, although that was in Michael Schumacher's ascendancy period. Uh, but uh, they were a formidable partnership, but 
Uh, Mika Hakkinen has different allegiances these days and uh, no love given to his former team there. He's got a job to do and he passed Lando Norris. And uh, Mika Hakkinen, that's probably the fifth person he's passed in two races. So it's been a magnificent performance by Mika Hakkinen so far. He's certainly lost none of his overall race pace. And he's certainly uh, right on top of his game at the moment. Who's to say Mika can't get a podium here? He would have to hope for problems for cars in front of him. But he's uh, well in striking distance for it if he, had, if he could take it. But he's a second behind Leclerc and four or five behind this trio of cars with Lewis Hamilton leading George Russell and Max Verstappen. And Mercedes are doing exactly as I predicted. They are towing George Russell with DRS. He has probably been ordered to stay behind Hamilton and get the tow from DRS and Slipstream to keep ahead of Verstappen. A tactical masterclass by Mercedes if that is the case. They could engineer a 1-2 finish all on the own here. I had no idea what I meant, but uh, I, I knew what I meant, but I just say it the wrong way. But they could really take this by discovering the net now. They're in perfect position. Here is Mick Schumacher. Two seconds behind Fernando Alonso. He arrived here last year as... Uh, he did really well battling with the likes of Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen, giving absolutely no quarter to them in the underpowered house while Aiden Jackson was struggling uh, with ERS component problems. And uh, now, what a difference a year has made. Mick Schumacher is actually beating Aiden Jackson for the first time uh, this season. But uh, Jackson is an enabling car. Unfortunately, it looks like today is going to be... Oh, he's passed Ocon. Jackson has passed him. <laughs> He's still able to pass a car, even with an ailing one himself, but uh, I think sadly, unless there's a safety car and Aiden can make it back up afterwards, he will lose his 13 strong point scoring record. Lando Norris is running into more problems. He's got his old pal Carlos Sainz around the outside in the Ferrari, and it looks like there's a more problem with that McLaren than first led on. He's been passed by Perez as well. He'll have to let Ricardo through if he has got a problem. Carl Sainz makes it to P7. Sergio Perez has absolutely been left behind by Mika Aguilar. This is perfect for Mika at the moment. He might need DRS to throw from the club, but he's not able to get close enough to activate it. But he's got a nice buffer between himself and Perez, which might help him out later. Daniel Ricciardo has passed Lado Norris, so Norris did let him through. And he's got card for, uh, problems for sure. Verstappen. I don't know what really much he could do here. This would be a damage limitation event if it is. He is ahead of Leclerc, so he will increase his championship lead. It won't be tenfold, but it will be an increase of his lead nonetheless. A titanic scrap between those two. In the championship this season, Charles Leclerc's win at the French Grand Prix, drawing within three points of Max Verstappen. Pretty much like 2021 all over again, except Hamilton is challenging, uh, Leclerc is challenging, and sadly not Hamilton. But today, Lewis Hamilton is in a commanding lead of this Hungarian Grand Prix and is towing George Russell with him. This is perfect team play by Mercedes. This is something that Ian Jackson and Mick Schumacher used to do uh, back in their last days back in Bahrain. I think it was uh, Jackson that was being towed by Mick uh, as they passed a couple of cars ahead at the Bahrain Grand Prix last year. Dagenden. Certainly not being left behind by those at the front. He's certainly trying his best. He just looks so comfortable with the car. He's adapted it like a duck to water after two races. And I think you have to, you have to base it on these performances that Mika has put in. Audi have really no alternative but to sign Mika for the rest of the season if he wants it. Which he has stated he does. It's Hamilton. I think he has seven or eight wins around here. Bit of a master stroke at this track. I think he won on his debut year here. And uh, obviously, in that debut year, Fernando Alonso held him up in the pits of qualifying, if you remember back in 2007. It's quite so long ago now, and that's what it was. It's Hamilton still, even after all this time, at the top of his game and leading a Grand Prix. And he's actually leading it on merit 
without being chased by faster cars around him because George Russell is doing a fantastic job of holding back Max Verstappen. We've got a bit of a scrap here for 12th down to about 18th, I think. Uh, there's Kim Magnuson, there's Sonoda. And yeah, there is a bit of a scrap going on here. Is Mick Schumacher as uh, he's going to get passed by his good friend Sebastian Vettel. Down the inside goes the Aston Martin. He can take Bottas within Vettel, and it's a fantastic move. Here comes Sebastian Vettel, and he's passed two cars in the space of a corner. Fantastic move by Sebastian Vettel. He's been pushed out of the outside by Bottas, and that's so unfortunate. Oh, I think Bottas will be looked at for that. He literally forced Vettel off the track, and all that great work that Vettel had done has now been undone, and now he's going to be behind the kill house of Kevin Magnussen. Vettel was uh, second here to Esteban Ocon last year. What a difference the year has made. Because unfortunately, he's down in P16 as the Aston Martin just is not competitive compared to the rest of the midfield cars. It makes you wonder why Fernando Alonso is even approaching Aston Martin, to be fair. But Aston Martin do need a replacement as Vettel at the beginning of the year announced his retirement on 4 1 at the end of the season. And uh, we're all going to miss him. Quite frankly, you wouldn't imagine that a few years ago when Vettel was uh, out at Red Bull, dominating every race, and uh, he was um, he wasn't very liked back then. But as Christian Horner put it earlier this season, or even probably before, everyone now that Vettel isn't really competing for wins anymore, sadly, I think everyone has got to appreciate the human side of Sebastian Vettel when he is a very wonderful human being uh, fighting for things like like sustainable fuels and, and a, like an advocate for climate change situations and all this stuff. Vettel is a great humanitarian, there's no doubt about it. Very much like his, his friend Michael Schumacher was. Michael Schumacher always used to give money to charities and support other things. Now we're seeing that side to Sebastian Vettel who's making a bit of a fight back now. He's back alongside Mick Schumacher. Aston Martin certainly do have some pace to show this weekend. On lap 16, uh, going into lap 17, and Lewis Hamilton and George Russell really are playing a good team game here. They could really win this race. George Russell is going to pit uh, for a set of hard tyres, I think that is, on the Mercedes. So I think George could be going to the end of the race. Mika Hackett now is running in second place. Max Verstappen is right behind Lewis Hamilton there uh, as they come out of the pits. Well, what a shame that George Russell is seven seconds in front of him. I think we're hoping that Mika Hakkinen can maybe run a couple of laps longer maybe than George Russell. So Hamilton and Verstappen are going to the end of the race as is one of the Alpha Turis. And pretty much, pretty much everyone that is pitting is going under the hard tyres. Uh, to finish this race. Sebastian Vettel now up to 10th, but he still has to pin. He's being chased by Mick Schumacher. And how, unf how, how, what does Mick Schumacher have to do to even get a point on the board? He's always hovering around P11 to P15. And he just, what has he got to do? You know, Mick Schumacher's definitely been the unlucky man of the 2022 season, that is for sure. Now, George Russell's coming in. Is Mika Hakkinen coming in? We sort of hope not, but I think he will. He is. That's really unfortunate, because I think we all want Mika Hakkinen to lead a lap of this, uh, this Grand Prix. Even if it will be only until he crosses the line. Uh, I don't know if you would lead a lap if you cross the line in first down the pit lane. Probably would. Well, hopefully there's no problems for Audi at this pit stop. And there certainly isn't. It's like clockwork at Audi. Now, Mika is going to come out where he started, I think. Which is behind Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari by two seconds. So, Lewis Hamilton has, I think, been let through by George Russell, quite frankly. And uh, they are slotting into status quo now. So George Russell really is playing the team game today and holding up for Stafford. Mercedes are performing an absolute tactical masterstroke here. 
It may not be on the levels of Michael Schumacher's win in 1998 in terms of pitch strategy, but in terms of team play overall, Mercedes are doing a fantastic job and they could really pull this off. Not only will they end their barren streak in the 2022 season, aside from the sprint race with George Russell, but they will also score a 1 2. And it's thoroughly deserved because George Russell is doing a fantastic job playing the team game here. His first Mercedes win will come. That is a given. He is owed it after Sakir in 2020, in which he absolutely somewhat dominated proceedings until errors in pit stops uh, lost him the win and a lot of points with it. Charles Leclerc having a very lonely race now in P4. Four seconds behind this man. Championship leader Max Verstappen. He will increase his lead over his rival by about two points, I believe. It's uh, for the championship difference. Aiden Jackson now on the hard tyres and 16 seconds behind Nicholas Latifi. And they are hoping for a safety car. I don't think they're going to get it. Now they just really want to run these power units, as they said, into the ground, really. Use up as much as they can, get every little bit of mileage out of them to avoid grid penalties later on. And I think now, I thought Jackson was being lapped, and that was why he was moving to the side there, but it's not going to be very long before he is lapped, because there is the race leader. Lewis Hamilton. It's been such an unlucky year for Lewis Hamilton. He's, got it. He's not used to this. He's having to fight hard for a win today. And this... Oh, and Max Verstappen there having a little bit of a look at George Russell. But George Russell shuts the door in Max's face. He is not letting Max Verstappen anywhere near his teammate. George Russell, a fantastic team play here. But he's now fallen out of DRS range from Lewis Hamilton. Will Hamilton back off and... Uh, give him back the advantage because he's going to need it because down the straight that red ball is still mighty fast even if the straight is shorter and George Russell is sacrificing his own race for his teammate and you've got to applaud that team play mentality very much like Bottas in that regard You just wonder if Hamilton will back out a bit and give Russell DRS. He's, I think he's sort of doing it according to the timing tower. 1.0, he's backed off a little. I think Hamilton definitely understands the order of the day. But George is not going to get DRS on the slab. For Stefan is. And you'd think it's going to be an easy pass. But it's not. He was nowhere near Russell down that straight. Hmm. I think he probably made a mistake in the final corner, perhaps. That was very strange there. But in any case, Mercedes still lead 1-2. Over how much longer? There's Aiden Jackson having a very lonely race down in last. He was very used to that last season, save for a couple of races. And obviously the race win in Monza. He's not used to it in this Audi. But they are running warm power units with a, a pretty much run down gearbox to the, to the canvas. I'm I would not be surprised if Audi chuck it at the end of this race. And uh, supply Aiden with uh, better components for Spa. Hamilton has dropped back a little bit to give Russell DRS. What a great team win this will be for Mercedes if they can pull this off. Hamilton has given his teammate DRS. It is a team tactic then. Hamilton and Russell know they can't run away from Max Verstappen. They haven't got the car capable of doing that anymore. So they're going to team up 
and take him on. And they're winning. That's the Stafford. Is not uh, not having his own way today for a change. We'll Mick Schumacher and Kevin Magnussen in the house in the house cars. Not with it today, once again. I do believe that uh, Haas are ahead of Alfa Romeo again in the constructors uh, because Alfa Romeo had that barren streak of about seven races without scoring any points. Kevin Madison obviously got the podium in Silverstone. And uh, well, well, what can Max Verstappen do? He's just got to stay there and hope there is a mistake from someone ahead of it because Hungary is notoriously difficult to overtake, especially in the final sector. All the twisty corners. And Hamilton is giving his teammates some DRS aid. And his teammate is not fighting him as a result. Mercedes are playing it perfectly here. You'd think George Russell would want to prove a point. But he's thinking about the team today. And he's doing a stellar job at it. This would certainly put Mercedes... Give them some breathing room against Audi in the Constructors' Championship. But Audi are going to be ahead of their targets in both Alpines and both McLarens with Mika Hakkinen in P5. So if, they, if that's what Audi need. If one driver can't score, the other has to. And that's been the case with Audi all season. Of course, Nico Hulkenberg started the season and they both scored points. And uh, since then, it's all been all about Aiden Jackson, but not today. He's going to lose his point-scoring streak at the track, which probably most people would have expected him to lose it anyway. Because, as we said, Hungara Ring has not been a favourite track for Aiden Jackson. It's been a bit of a bogey track for him. Uh, in the feature race last year, he got passed by someone. I think it was Giuliano Alessi, I believe. And that was that was before that was after Aiden Jackson did a sensational move on a lacy on the in the opening laps. If Jackson was going to go down, he went down swinging. He's not being able to do that today because the car has not really complied with him this race. And look at this! What an absolutely wonderful game being played here by George Russell. And I don't mean game as in mind games. I mean what a team play game with George Russell's playing. He could easily. Pass his teammate, but he's not doing it. He's thinking of the team. They're both thinking of the team. The team need this result after a bit of a, a very below par 2022 season, and that's only by their stellar high standards, of course. Mr. Van Ocon had damage and had to pit for a front wing, and now he's caught up to the back of Nicholas TV. In fact, he's actually caught up to the back of Lance Stroll as well. So he's got ahead of Jackson at some point. And he's raced away, and there's not really much else Jackson can do. It's 12 seconds behind Ocon, which probably means he's almost a lap down to these three. I don't think Jackson's really going to mind. He'll probably want to end anything that ends the race earlier for Jackson today. He'll take it. Hamilton, Russell, and Verstappen separated by five tenths of a second. And then there is a four second gap between Verstappen and Charles Leclerc, followed by a five second gap between himself and Mika Hakkinen. But he is clear of Sergio Perez and staying ahead of him as well. It's been a stellar effort by Hakkinen once again. He's going to better his personal results. A fifth place. In fact, he might equal it because I think he was fifth in France. Will we see Mika Hakkinen back amongst this lot later on? Audi have got big upgrades coming for this Belgian Grand Prix. We feel that it may be the last big upgrades of the season. Obviously complying with the cost cap, of course. And I think... I'm hearing it. I think Jackson has got the same problem. They did say at Audi it might reoccur. I think it has. And Aiden Jackson, just no luck today. It's not his fault by any stretch. But, my goodness. And so now Lewis Hamilton is coming up on an ailing Audi. And he gets right out of the way. Good boy, Aiden. Gets right out of the way. He knows he can't fight them. 
one because of blue flags and two because of an alien car. And, uh, he's getting right out of it. He is staying out of the way. Is he going to retire the car? I don't think so. I think he's gone past the pits. His teammates coming at a rate of knots. I expect Aiden to back out of it completely and get out of his way. And he does. Julie. And Jackson, I think you saw Mika give him a little wave. Uh, Mika will be briefed on Aiden Jackson's problems. And, uh, I don't know why they're not retiring that car. I know it's for mileage, and I understand that, um, you know, they want to avoid grip penalties, but they're not going to incur any grip penalties by retiring the car. Jackson's stubborn, that's for sure. Usually. He did ask, what did we do? The team advised him to be stubborn and get to the end of the race as possible. And, uh, well, this is not going to brighten Jackson's mood. He's been pretty uh, down all day. He's been having his radio message when the problem first occurred. But it wasn't his team, it was his equipment. Because it hasn't played ball with him today. Well, back at the front, he's, uh, Jackson has not obstructed the battle at the front, which is good of him, really. Because I think if he did, he would have had some serious words coming from Toto Wolf in his ear. But uh, obviously, Aiden Jackson is on loan from Mercedes. He is their reserve driver, officially. And, uh, the problem has now fixed itself, and Jackson is back on it. took over the role from the uh, reserve driver from Nick De Vries uh, last season and uh, rumour has it that Nick De Vries is being considered for the Alfa Turi scene which would be unusual because Nick De Vries has never really had any affiliation with the Red Bull Academy Nick De Vries when he was in Formula 2 didn't have a driver academy at the time some people think that harmed his career a bit he's F2 champion obviously Formula E champion as well. Freeze is certainly a capable driver, so if Alvaturi do need uh, a driver to pair with Yuki Tsunoda for next season, if Pierre Gasly is off to Alpine, is as expected. If Alpine lose the contract of Oscar Piastri, it was strange really because it was obviously a deal struck that not many people knew about. It's not like uh, Piastri, as far as I'm aware, was always uh, on Alpine's books. He'd been on Alpine's books for years. He really didn't have any affiliation with McLaren, as most of be aware, but um, he does. And he could be joining them for next year in place of Daniel Ricciardo. And some say it was a move orchestrated after McLaren failed to land Aiden Jackson because they were apparently talking to him as well. Which would have been very complicated uh, for Daniel Ricciardo and he might not have even raced this season if that had come off and Mercedes saw the opening at Audi and took it and they have certainly uh, it has certainly paid off if not today though this is now almost a minute behind Esteban Ocon in the Alpine but let's be fair he's not got the car to battle almost anyone today well, we're approaching the end of this race, and uh, Lewis Hamilton is still leading from George Russell. Mercedes are absolutely playing a blinding team game today. George Russell has been magnificent, to be fair. He really deserves the plaudits he's going to get at the end of this race, if Mercedes can make it to the end, which they should do. They're normally bulletproof. It's not in the Audi. Uh, Nico Hulkenberg will tell you that, but for Mika Hakkinen, it's been almost imperious his first two races. And for once, Jackson is the one having the reliability troubles with his gearbox, mind you. Not really his power unit. Of course, the gearbox is somewhat part of the power unit, so it will affect the power unit in some degree. But Audi are using one that they started at the beginning of the season. I think they put a fresh one in for Azerbaijan and then swapped it back afterwards. And uh, George Russell looks a little bit closer to Hamilton there. And I'm pretty sure he will not be passing him. Well, at least 
these three can't be separated on the track at the moment. It's literally a tablecloth, as I said earlier. And Hamilton is driving absolutely impeccably at the moment and dragging his teammate with him. Well, not dragging, but towing. For a better word. We have to feel, unfortunately, if Max Verstappen did have DRS and no real effect of the car in front having DRS, Verstappen would have probably passed these two by now. I think in some degree Max is faster, but George Russell is putting up a stallion defense for his teammate here. And Mercedes are just six laps away from a magnificent 1-2 which will be thoroughly deserved and it will put them clear of Audi in the constructors not clear as in mathematically impossible but it will certainly give them a nice gap Lewis Hamilton got to admire his driving in this race it's been absolutely stellar so far and uh George is looking a lot closer. I wonder if Hamilton is uh, maybe getting a problem here because George does. Oh my word, no, 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 that wasn't smoked, it was. Oh no, no, please no. Oh, Lewis Hamilton is out of the race. I cannot believe it. Lewis Hamilton has been robbed of this Grand Prix. Mick Hackenden now up to fourth. Oh, I do not believe that. And now, watch Max Verstappen light up with glee because he, George Russell is going to have nothing to defend this Red Bull in a straight line. This is cruel. And it's not because of Verstappen. I'm not saying that because Verstappen is doing it. I'm saying because fate is cruel. Mercedes have deserved this race. And now, it's going to be procession personified now. Max Verstappen down the inside. George Russell... Nothing to defend. He tries to turn four, but nothing doing. Oh, I cannot believe it. Lewis Hamilton, the fates have robbed him again. Well, if you believe popular opinion by Abu Dhabi 2021 anyway. But this, this is the cruelest thing I will ever see, anyone will ever see this season. Lewis Hamilton pulling to the side in a race he has absolutely deserved and it's been taken from him and Mercedes for that matter because now Max Verstappen is P1 well not being mean to Verstappen here but it is cruel on Mercedes it really is they've played a stunning Grand Prix George Russell now can fight for the win if he wants but does he have the car against the Red Bull Probably not. Max has definitely looked quicker than them this in this race. And now, hear this. Mika Hakkinen is P4. Well, he's not going to get a podium from here unless someone else drops out in front of him, which would be great. I think it'd be, it'd be some karma if it was Max Verstappen, but the Red Bull has been bulletproof, aside from Silverstone, in which Max dropped out. I cannot believe it. I just cannot believe it. Lewis Hamilton absolutely dominating this race. Not in a runaway fashion, but he certainly controlled the race effortlessly. And now, he's out of it. Absolute cruel. That's the coolest thing I think we'll see this year. And because the Mercedes does not have the car that the Red Bull does, George will have nothing to fight for Stavon with and he could even lose out to Leclerc yet because here comes Charles Leclerc. Leclerc is in DRS range of Russell. Oh and that's Jackson running wide there as his struggles continue. And his heart will go out to his team as well. I think, uh, I think, uh, is that, it's ahead. It's obviously a lapped car. I think it's the Haas's. I think it's the Haas pair of Anderson and Schumacher, I think. Or at least one of them. That's going to be some glee for Mick Schumacher. 
he was uh, pretty much uh, in Jackson's pocket uh, for most of last year, of course. So that, for Mick Schumacher, will be some personal happiness for him. Because Jackson stole all the headlines last year in the underpowered Haas. And not to be mean to Mick Schumacher, I am obviously a Mick Schumacher fan. But let's be fair here, in Jackson took all the uh, headlines and put Mick in his pocket last year. So that, for Mick Schumacher, is a personal win that he will take. He's lapped in Jackson. I don't think he ever thought he'd say that after last season. Now the question now is, can Charles Leclerc pass George Russell before this race is over? And what was even cool about that is that Hamilton has suffered a very similar situation to Felipe Massa in 2008, uh, where Massa retired, laps from the end, literally, I think it was four, before his engine gave out. Hamilton was about three laps from the end before his engine gave out. Oh, motorsport truly can be a cruel business. And Lewis Hamilton is experiencing that right now. And some say he's kind of experienced it before. And of course, he knows that feeling all too well from Malaysia in uh, 2016 when he retired from a commanding lead. That day was pretty much the final uh, real nail in the coffin, let's say, for his championship hopes in 2016. Nico Rosberg went on to win that the title that year from that result. It really helped, let's say. I don't think it was the it was probably the defining moment of the season for sure. It won't be so defining this year because Hamilton is not really directly in the championship battle. But the person this does help is Max Verstappen because he will increase his championship lead over Charles Leclerc by a bit more. Final lap and Max Verstappen hasn't looked like winning this race all day and now he's going to. Well it's not one for trying, the Hungara ring is notoriously difficult to overtake but Mercedes team game had been Max Verstappen until the very last and now he's coming up to the Alpine of, that's not Alonso is it? No it's Ocon, I think it might be Ocon. Oh did Ocon get in Russell's way there just to compound Mercedes misery? Max Verstappen comes round the final corner to win a race that he didn't look like winning at one point. Verstappen wins again. Followed home by George Russell and Charles Leclerc. Now we wait for Mika Hakkinen to finish fourth. What a stunning race by Hakkinen again. Well, I think we'll be seeing a bit more of it later in the year because I think on this evidence, Audi have to sign him in for the rest of the year. And was almost a given. So, Max Verstappen wins for George Russell. Charles Leclerc loses ground in the championship. Hacken is fourth. Perez, Sainz, both McLarens, Fernando Alonso and Pierre Gasly. Val Vittori is your top 10. Alex Albon 14th and Vettel 13th. That's impressive. Both Alfa Romeos, Sebastian Vettel, Alex Albon, Sonoda, both horses, Lance Stroll, Nicholas Latifi, Esteban Ocon, and last, Aiden Jackson. Didn't think we'd say that at the beginning of the year. But gearbox problems really curtailed his race, and there, I think, was Sebastian Vettel coming up on him. So Schumacher had lapped him. Well, I work not to speak ill of Verstappen, but he didn't really deserve it today, did he? And that's really because, not because of him, but because the magnificent team play that Mercedes gave him. But Lewis Hamilton suffers cruel fate, very much like Massa. And uh, Mercedes wait 
for a Grand Prix win goes on. It shouldn't, but it does. Wow. Wow. I, I cannot believe that. Never has a win been so cruelly taken away than the one Mercedes earned today. But that's motorsport. Anything can happen in Formula One, and it usually does, to quote the late, great Murray Walker. Max Verstappen is your winner from George Russell, who got held up by Ocon at the end. He was pretty lucky uh, not to get overtaken by Leclerc and all that. Hakkinen finishes fourth. Magnificent drive from him again. Perez, Sainz, Norris, Ricardo, Alonso, Gasly. That is your top 10. Both Alfa Romeos just missing out on points. Vettel, who had a good race up to a point. Albon, Sonoda, Mick Schumacher, once again Haas, Suffer in 16th and 17th. Stroll, 18th. Nicholas Deeb in 19th. Ocon, 20th. Aiden Jackson, 21st. 22nd with a DNF, Lewis Hamilton. So now the lead between Leclerc and Verstappen has increased by about 10 points, I think. That's 13 between the two. Aiden Jackson, still only 62 points behind for Stafford. And with Audi bringing upgrades and probably a fresh power unit, he might be right back at the front. He's not going to win the title from there, but it might not be the last person. It might be the only race he doesn't score with any luck. Hakkinen has overhauled Nico Hulkenberg in two races. That's unbelievable. Hulkenberg has less in nine, nine or ten races than Hakkinen has in two. That's astounding. Alfa Turi have actually overhauled Haas in the constructors standings and Alfa Romeo are actually ahead of them as well. So uh, Alfa Romeo's uh, player for a point in the last two races have overheard them to seven. Well, it's not the most deserving win he'll ever score, but a win's a win and Max Verstappen will certainly take it. He increases his championship lead, but every heart in the F1 world goes out to Lewis Hamilton, who absolutely deserves this race today. And uh, that morale at Mercedes is going to hit rock bottom, and it's already been low for most of this year. So now, we head to the summer break for Formula 1 in 2022. There's going to be a lot of action. We'll be back to cover it all when it's F1 returns to Far Far Frankershop. Goodbye. Thank you for watching. We'll see you soon. Okay, track's green right now, so take a few laps to get the tyres up to temp and get yourself in the zone. <laughs> 